Hey guys, what's up? It's Savannah. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another true crime video here on my YouTube channel. I know we have switched up the location again. The background is different. I'm trying a couple things out, trying to see what you guys like better. I know a lot of you liked the black. A lot of you didn't like it. You said you preferred a brighter setting, a brighter space, and that it makes the dark topics that we discuss not as dark and dreary. So I'm trying to find a little bit of a happy medium. So let me know what you guys think about this one or if you prefer the black, if you think it looks more professional. Um, I'm really open to any ideas you may have. So please let me know on that. As you guys can tell by the title of today's episode, today we are talking about the unsolved disappearance of the Jameson family. Now this one, you guys, is crazy. It's wild. This case has a countless amount of theories and we are going to go through every single one of them. And I'm really, really interested to see where you guys fall and where you are kind of lying on all of this. And I really can't wait to read your comments below and see what you think about it. So with that being said, let's jump right on into today's video. Now, as you guys can tell by the title of today's episode, today we are talking about the unsolved deaths of the Jameson family. On October 8th, 2009, Bobby, Sherry Lynn, and their daughter Madison mysteriously vanished from Oklahoma. Now, with that being said, let's jump right on into it today. Now, before we get started, I do want to thank our sponsor of today's video, which is Daily Harvest. Now, I don't know about you guys, but a big goal for me this year when thinking about my New Year's resolutions was that this year, I really wanted to take the time to refocus on what it means to take care of myself. And let me tell you, this could not be any easier than with Daily Harvest. I personally love their cold brew and almond smoothies as well as their coffee and almond latte. It is so good. So Daily Harvest delivers delicious food that's all built on organic fruits and vegetables straight to your doorstep. It literally takes just minutes to prepare and I never have to think twice about the food that I'm putting into my body. Daily Harvest is ready when you are because everything stays fresh in the freezer until you decide that you want to prepare prepare it. Daily Harvest never uses any preservatives or added sugars or artificial anything in their food. So if you guys want to get started with Daily Harvest today, you can do so by going to dailyharvest.com and using the promo code KILLER. Again, that is just dailyharvest.com and using the promo code KILLER to get $25 off your first box. That's promo code KILLER for $25 off your first box with Daily Harvest. Again, just go to dailyharvest.com promo code killer. So let's talk about the Jameson family. Now, like I said, we have 44-year-old Bobby Jameson, his wife, which is 40-year-old Sherry Lynn, and their six-year-old daughter, Madison. Now, Sherry Lynn had previously been married and had a son from this prior marriage. This son is named Colton. Now, Colton had actually lived with the Jamesons for the majority of his life up until just a couple months prior to their disappearance. Now, the Jamesons, for the most part, kept to themselves, and they seemed from the outside looking in like your average family. Don't they all? However, as we know from reviewing these cases, 10 out of 10 times when someone is described as the average everyday family, it's typically not the case. And that very much applies in the Jameson's circumstances. Now, both Bobby and Sherry Lynn were both very spiritual people. However, they took this to the extreme. And after a while, they really started to believe that their house that they were living in was haunted. They started to believe that their house was being invaded by these dark energies and dark spirits. And along with that, their daughter, who again was six years old, she had an imaginary friend. This imaginary friend was named Emily. And if you've ever been around little kids before, you probably know that imaginary friends are not that uncommon. A lot of little kids have them. However, Sherry Lynn truthfully believed that her six-year-old daughter's imaginary friend was actually a demonic spirit. Now, this fear of these spirits was so intense that Bobby had actually visited his pastor and asked his pastor if he knew of anywhere where he could purchase what he called special bullets. And he said he wanted them, that way he could shoot the spirits that were living on his roof. 
The family also purchased a satanic Bible, which Sherry Lynn at first said was a joke. However, over time, it was said that they used this satanic Bible to perform exorcisms in order to try and free their house of any demonic spirits. Now, in 2003, Bobby was actually in a really bad car crash, and this car crash resulted in him having terrible lower back pain. And this terrible lower back pain would heavily impact his mood. If his back was hurting, it would throw off his entire day. And along with that, Sherry Lynn also had bipolar disorder. So she suffered with bipolar disorder and she did have medication for this. However, a lot of the times she didn't like to take it. She wasn't really strict about taking it. So because of the misuse of her medications, it really caused Sherry to have these angry outbursts or super depressive episodes because she wasn't taking her medication properly. Now in 2007, Sherry Lynn's sister actually died from a complete freak accident. She actually got stung by a bee on her tongue and it caused her to die. That was her cause of death. And according to Sherry Lynn's mother, Marla, who is her sister, and Sherry Lynn were best friends. She said, quote, Marla was not just her sister. She was her best friend as well. Her death absolutely devastated Sherry Lynn. She would spend days up in her room. She was very depressed and had to take medication. It obviously caused a lot of strain on their marriage. They argued, but then again, all couples do, end quote. And obviously, Connie is referring to the marriage of Bobby and Sherry Lynn. Now, to kind of go hand in hand with Sherry Lynn and Bobby's belief in demons and spirits and all of that, Sherry Lynn also told a lot of her friends that she believed that she herself was a witch. And her friends had said that Sherry Lynn and them would often perform what is called a seance. And if you are unfamiliar with that, it is basically a ritual that is performed that's supposed to help with communicating with spirits. And a lot of Sherry Lynn's friends actually said that she took this ritual a lot more seriously than they did. A lot of her friends did it kind of for fun and they were more lighthearted about it. However, they said that Sherry Lynn was extremely dedicated to this and took this very, very seriously. Now, her friends also did say that the Jameson house did have a very dark and heavy feel to it. However, you could also play devil's advocate here and say that the darkness and the heavy of this house came from all the paranoia and depression and bipolar episodes that were happening inside of it. So that basically is the backstory of the Jameson family as we know it, and we will continue to dive deeper into them as we continue on with the rest of the case. But now I want to move on to talk about October 8th, 2009. Now, at the time of their disappearance, the Jamesons were living in a town called Eufaula, Oklahoma which in 2010, so one year after their disappearance, had a population of about 2,800 people, so 2,800 people. And on October 8th, 2009, the Jameson family ended up packing up their truck because they were going to travel to an area called Red Oak, which was located in the Sandboy Mountain Range. Now, the reason the family went there is because Bobby and Sherry Lynn were reportedly contemplating purchasing a 40-acre plot of land there. Their plan was to purchase the 40 acres and have that while they were simultaneously living in a storage shed that they already knew. The main point in this is that they wanted to start over. They wanted a fresh start. They wanted to move to the mountains. But on the flip side of that, there is a lot of people that believe that this was a very spur of the moment decision. Because according to Colton, Sherry Lynn's son, he had actually seen his mom two weeks prior to the disappearance. And she said absolutely nothing about making this move to Red Oak. He said, quote, I did meet up with mom a few weeks before they went missing and she seemed a little better like she was trying to turn things around. But the thing I find so strange is they never mentioned anything about moving out to the mountains to me. They didn't say anything, end quote. So on October 8th, 2009, Bobby and Sherry Lynn packed up their white truck to move to Red Oak, but they were never seen again after this. Now, I want to talk about a surveillance video that authorities found during their investigation, and this is very interesting. If you are watching me on my YouTube channel and not listening to me on the podcast, I will have the video up right here so you can see what I'm talking about, and if I can't put it up, I'll put it in the link down below. Now, this video is 
of Bobby and Sherry Lynn packing up their truck before heading off into the mountains. Now, according to authorities, this video struck them as odd because Bobby and Sherry Lynn were seen walking back and forth from their house to the truck, making about 20 trips in total. However, they never said a word to each other as they were passing each other. The police said that the two of them also seemed to be walking in a very zombie-like trance. And because of that, it led police to question whether or not the two of them were on drugs at the time that they were doing this, which we will get into a little bit more later. Another red flag that authorities saw in this video was this storage container. And it wasn't just the storage container, it was what was written on the storage container. Sherry Lynn had graffitied the sides of the storage container and it had said things like, quote, witches don't like when their cats were killed end quote. And this was in reference to Sherry Lynn's cat dying and her believing that her neighbors had poisoned them. The storage container also said things like, quote, only God can judge and gossip is a sin, end quote. It also said, quote, three cats killed by people, end quote. It's all very, very bizarre. It's completely graffitied on there. It just, it looks very weird. So the family left on October 8th. It was Bobby, Madison, and Sherry Lynn. And after a couple days of them being there and no one hearing a thing from them after that, that is when the family contacted the authorities and the investigation began. And in the beginning, there were a lot of volunteers out where the family was supposed to be in the Red Oak area. And then after eight days of searching, authorities actually found the family's truck. And this was a huge breakthrough in the case. The truck was found about an hour away from where the Jamesons lived, and it was also found about 25 minutes away from Red Oak. To be specific, it was found in an area called Latimer County. Now, not only did the police find the family truck, they found a lot inside of the truck as well. After conducting a search inside of the truck, police found both Bobby and Sherry Lynn's cell phones, their wallets, Sherry Lynn's purse, a GPS, $32,000 in cash, as well as the family dog that had been visibly malnourished after being in there for so long. Now, the truck itself was seemingly in good condition. It didn't look like the family ran into something or that there was an accident. The truck looked completely fine. Now, based off of what they found inside of the truck, all of the belongings that were in there, it really made authorities believe that whenever the Jamesons got out of the car, they planned to get back in the car. They wouldn't have left both of their cell phones, their wallets, and they certainly wouldn't have left $32,000 in cash just sitting in their truck. Now, when the authorities told the Jameson's friends and family how much money was found in the truck, they were actually very confused and surprised. And let me explain why. Both Bobby and Sherry Lynn were actually on disability and they were having major, major financial problems at the time. Now, no one could figure out where this money could have possibly come from. And because of that, it led to a lot of speculation as to if this money came from a possible drug deal and if the Jamesons were involved in drug dealing. Now, obviously their friends and family didn't want to believe that they would A, be involved in something like this at all, but B, even if they were involved in something like this, they didn't want to believe that they would bring their six-year-old daughter, Madison, into this environment. But the way the police saw it was that no stone should be left unturned in this case. Now, the truck was found, like I said, eight days after the disappearance. And at first, it seemed like a huge breakthrough. Everyone thought that because they found the car, it should be relatively easy to find the Jamesons. However, it wasn't until four years later, on November 16th, 2013, that hunters were hunting in Latimer County. And this is when they stumbled across the remains of Sherry Lynn, Bobby, and Madison. Obviously, when they found the remains, they contacted the authorities and the authorities arrived to the scene. And on July 3rd, 2014, 
2018, the remains were confirmed to be that of Sherry Lynn, Bobby, and Madison. Okay, quick little break before we move on to talk to you guys and remind you of our sponsor today, Daily Harvest. Now, I don't know about you guys, but a big goal for me this year when thinking about my New Year's resolutions was that this year I really wanted to take the time to refocus on what it means to take care of myself. And let me tell you, this could not be any easier than with Daily Harvest. They have been the one thing that makes me feel better about my day and about myself. I personally love their cold brew and almond smoothies as well as their coffee and almond latte. It is so good. Now, if you don't know what Daily Harvest is, let me explain it to you. So Daily Harvest delivers delicious food that's all built on organic fruits and vegetables straight to your doorstep. It literally takes just minutes to prepare and I never have to think twice about the food that I'm putting into my body. Daily Harvest is ready when you are because everything stays fresh in the freezer until you decide that you want to prepare it. So in hindsight, you are also wasting less food, which is a huge bonus. Daily Harvest never uses any preservatives or added sugars or artificial anything in their food. And for all my almond milk lovers out there, they actually just launched their very own almond milk, which is fantastic. It's literally just made of almonds and a dash of sea salt. That's it. At the end of the day, Daily Harvest is undeniably delicious and it's clean food without any of the prep. So if you guys want to get started with Daily Harvest today, you can do so by going to dailyharvest.com and using the promo code KILLER. Again, that is just dailyharvest.com and using the promo code KILLER to get $25 off your first box. That's promo code KILLER for $25 off your first box with Daily Harvest. Again, just go to dailyharvest.com, promo code KILLER killer. So like I said, the remains were confirmed to be that of the Jameson family on July 3rd, 2014. But because of how decomposed the bodies were, again, they weren't discovered for about four years after they went missing. Because of how decomposed they were, the medical examiner was not able to confirm a cause of death, which in this case would have been crucial to figuring out who was responsible for this homicide. Now, in reference to the Jameson truck, their remains were found about three miles away from where the truck was. And when they were found, they were found all laying face down side by side. Now, because there was no cause of death, it's been really difficult for authorities to figure out exactly what happened and what the scenario was here. Did the family leave the truck on their own? Were they forced out of the truck? If this was a drug deal, why on earth did they bring Madison? The discovery of the remains really brought up more questions than it did answers. And because of that, there is a lot of theories in this case, like I said in the beginning. So we are going to go over those theories right now. Now, the first theory here is that this was a murder suicide. Like we said before, the Jameson household was definitely a dark one. And not only that, Bobby and Sherry Lynn were clearly having problems in their relationship. Now I say clearly because authorities actually found an 11 page hate letter that was written from Sherry Lynn directed to Bobby in the truck when they were searching it. In this letter, Sherry Lynn called Bobby a bunch of names, including a loner and a hermit who didn't care about his daughter, and continued the letter with a list of things she absolutely hated about Bobby, including the fact that she wanted a divorce. Police were also able to figure out that Sherry Lynn actually had a 22 caliber pistol that she did carry around with her. And when the medical examiner did the exam on Bobby, they did find a small hole in the back of Bobby's skull, but the police have said that there's no way that the hole was from a bullet, while on the flip side, there are hunters who say that it very well could have been from the exact gun that Sherry Lynn was said to have owned. I'm not sure why or how the hunters had access to what this bullet hole in the back of the head looked like. However, the hunters that did see it do believe that it was the result of a 22 caliber gun. But what's interesting here is that Sherry Lynn and Madison, neither of them had any injuries that suggested that they had been shot. 
But to this day, Sherry Lynn's 22 caliber pistol has never been discovered, but a lot of people do believe that if this was a murder-suicide, the murder weapon would have been found somewhere. Now, when it comes to the hate letter that Sherry Lynn wrote to Bobby, one of Sherry Lynn's friends defended her by saying, quote, she would write things down when they came into her mind, but then she would move on. She loved Bobby, end quote. Now, Bobby's mother, Starlet, had a lot to say when it came to Bobby and Sherry Lynn's relationship, and she said, quote, Sherry Lynn became incredibly angry and spiteful sometimes. She was jealous of my relationship with Madison and of my relationship with Bobby. The last time I actually spoke to Bobby was in April 2009 because she abandoned me from speaking to him on the phone. Bobby loved her and he suffered because of her moods. There was a time when I tried to get him and Madison to move away to Oklahoma City. But really, I would never have wanted them to split up. They had their difficulties, but they loved each other very much. End quote. Starlet also said that the car accident that Bobby was in in 2003 left him incredibly depressed. However, Sherry Lynn and Bobby loved each other very much, and that's why they stuck out their marriage. Now, the second theory in this case is that the Jamesons were murdered by a satanic cult. Now, when it comes to Connie, who is Sherry Lynn's mother, she said, quote, that part of Oklahoma is known for that, cults and stuff like that. From what I've been told and from what I've read, I was told around the time of Sherry Lynn's disappearance that she was on a cult hit list. End quote. Now, authorities have said that they've never been able to find the satanic cult that Connie is referring to. But to me, I do find this theory interesting because it's coming from the mother of Sherry Lynn. Sherry Lynn knows her daughter. Typically, no one knows their daughter like their own mother. So to me, I find it very interesting that Connie thinks that this could be an option. And when it comes to Madison, Connie went on to say that there is absolutely no way that Bobby and Sherry Lynn would have put Madison in danger. Now, the next theory is that this was a drug deal gone wrong. Where the Jamesons lived is a very well-known area for drug activity and in particular for meth. A lot of people have said that in the surveillance video that I mentioned earlier that Bobby and Sherry Lynn both looked like they are completely drugged out on meth. It is also believed that this theory could explain the amount of money that was found in the truck. Like I said, there was $32,000 found in that truck and no one has been able to come up with a logical reason as to why the money would have been there if it wasn't for a drug deal. Now, if you're doing drugs a lot, especially hardcore drugs like meth, it will mess with your common sense. So a lot of people do think it's also possible that their use of meth, if they were using, could have fogged their common sense, fogged their judgment, and had them bring their daughter into situations that were not safe. Now, a kind of branch off of this theory, which is extremely interesting and I think very important in this case, is that the Sandboy Mountains were known for having meth labs throughout it. And Bobby had allegedly reported one of the meth labs that were there to the authorities. He essentially ratted out this meth lab. And a lot of people think that this is obviously the motive here. Bobby ratted out a meth lab, and as revenge, him and his entire family were killed. Again, though, it does not explain the money left in the truck. According to Connie, Sherry Lynn's mother, she said, quote, I don't know all the details, but I can tell you Bobby had recently gone to the police to report someone in the local area for running a meth lab. Obviously, that person is going to be very upset end quote. Now, Bobby's mother, Starlet, said, quote, there are a lot of them up there, referring to meth labs. Maybe they stumbled across one of them when they were there and someone came after them, end quote. To me, my question there is if Bobby, and maybe one of you can answer this for me, if Bobby was using meth, actively using meth, why would he report a meth lab to the authorities. That to me doesn't make sense. To me, I think about it in a way of like, if someone is smoking weed in a state where it's not legal, why would they then go and route out to the police a dispensary? To me, it just doesn't really make a lot of sense. But then again, I am very uneducated when it comes to the hardcore drug world. So if one of you has an explanation, I am all ears on that. Now, another really bizarre theory in this case is the one that says that the Jameson family was murdered by 
Bobby's own father, Bob. It is said that Bob Dean Jameson, who is Bobby's father, could have been responsible for these murders. Bobby and Sherry Lynn had actually filed a protective order against Bob just six months prior to their death. After he claimed to murder their entire family over small business dealings. The protective order stated that Bob was, quote, a very dangerous man who thinks he is above the law, end quote. And it is also stated that he is involved with prostitutes and gangs and even the mafia. Bob did pass away two months after the family went missing. So that is important to note. And it is said by Bobby's uncle, who is Bob's brother, whose name is Jack. He said that at the time of the disappearance, Bob was, quote, either in a hospital or at a rest home, end quote. It was said that Bob was a very disturbed individual. However, the people who knew him said that they did not believe that he would be capable of murdering anyone, let alone his own family. Now, according to Connie, she said, quote, Sherry Lynn and Bobby were scared of Bob. He had a temper and he had money. There were also rumors that he had connections to the Mexican mafia. That's what I've been told, end quote. So now let's move on to this last theory, which is a very, very strange one. This theory got brought into the light in 2010, and it came from a woman who claimed that she used to be a part of a white supremacy group. And she said that while she was a part of this group, one day she ended up running across a book. Now she said that in this book, there were names of people that the members of the group either had a problem with or needed to be quote unquote taken care of. The woman said she memorized as many names in this book as she could, and then she went home and started Googling these names, and a lot of these names came up on Google with missing person reports. And this included the Jameson family, because again, like I said, this was in 2010 before their remains had been discovered, so they were still missing people at this time. This woman also told the authorities about the engraving that was on Bobby's wedding ring. That was how much detail she had, which was true. And authorities were shocked by this because that was not a detail that a lot of people had access to. In terms of what else this woman knew, authorities said, quote, she had overheard some conversations with these guys where clearly they were talking about Sherry Lynn, Bobby, and Madison, and that they took care of them. Supposedly, one of the guys talked about how he liked to put Madison on his lap and how it made him feel good end quote. Now, this ties into a picture that was taken of Madison and found on Bobby's phone, which again was found in his truck. This picture was taken on October 8th, and it is of Madison, and a lot of people think that she looks scared or unhappy in this picture because her arms are folded. According to Bobby's mother, Starlet, she said, quote, in this picture, Madison is looking away from the camera. She looks unhappy, and she has her arms crossed. She loved having her picture taken, and if that had been Bobby or Sherry Lynn behind the camera, she would not have looked like that end quote. Neither Starlet nor Connie believe that this picture of Madison was taken by her parents. They believe it was taken by someone else, possibly the person or most likely the person that was responsible for their deaths. Now, during this investigation, authorities also figured out that there was a man staying at the Jameson house with them. The Jamesons had invited him in to stay with them for a little bit. I don't know how they met this man. I don't really know why they let him stay with him. But this man was extremely racist and was said to have hated anyone who was not white. He was a terrible, terrible racist. Now, Sherry Lynn had Native American heritage. Now, this man went on and on and on one night about how much he hated anyone who was not white. And because of this, Sherry Lynn felt extremely uncomfortable and she ended up pulling out her gun and threatening to shoot this man. So after hearing this, the authorities obviously wanted to check in on this man and see if he possibly had anything to do with it, but he did have an alibi during the time that the Jamesons went missing. But this definitely could be a reason as to how the Jamesons' name ended up on a white supremacy hit list. I also want to say that it is not believed that the Jamesons just got lost or succumbed to weather conditions. Connie said, quote, if that happened, why were they laying face down all side by side like that? Also, why did they leave the dog in the car? Madison loved that dog and didn't go anywhere without it. She wouldn't have just left her in the car, end quote. 
Colton also said, quote, that just doesn't make any sense. Bobby grew up in the country, and I mean proper country. He knew nature, and he knew what he was doing out there. No way would he have gotten them lost like that end quote. Now, a friend of the family also stated in reference to them being found three miles away from the truck that, quote, Bobby would get in pain walking around the house, let alone covering that kind of ground. I do not believe they left the truck by choice, end quote. So as you can tell, this case has way more questions than it does answers. And it's a case that has more theories than we've seen in a while. And this case also really shook the community. The sheriff actually ended up quitting in 2011 before the bodies were found because he felt so guilty for not being able to find Madison in particular because she was only six years old at the time. So that is the end of this case, you guys. Let me know what you guys think and what theory you are leaning towards or is is there a new theory that we haven't spoken about that you think is the most plausible? To me, I think the white supremacy hit list is very plausible. I think the ratting out a meth lab and them getting revenge is very, very plausible. I don't believe that it was his own father. That one I don't really believe, but you guys can let me know what you think. All right, you guys, that is going to be it for me today. Thank you so much for tuning in to another true crime video here on my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Savannah. I make videos a couple times a week. You should subscribe and join the family. I love you guys so much, and I'll be back in a couple days with a brand new one. And until then, stay safe. Bye, guys.